So uh, I will speak, uh, so everybody here, about monitoring what we are doing at ETH um, on our cluster environment. Uh, to be honest, I don't know much really about uh, Ganglia. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, will tell you why. And um, I recently started to experiment uh, with the Singer 2, so we'll tell you on both things. At the IT, at the IT services on uh, ETH, we have currently two bigger clusters, uh, Brutus, the old one, and Euler, the new one. Euler is not a replacement of Brutus. People always get that wrongly. It's uh, an additional cluster, so uh, we will <coughs> renew Brutus eventually in the next year as well. Um, as you see, we have in Zurich uh, almost 1,000 nodes. If I look on Ganglia, there are over 1,000 nodes. And um, Euler, as it is at the moment at uh, Lugano, it uh, hosted or housed by GSGS, um, has currently 448 uh, compute nodes and a lot of uh, and some virtual nodes. Uh, but uh, the next <coughs> the next 400 something nodes are already ordered, uh, so we will uh, blow up that system. Uh, we will enlarge the system in the, <coughs> in the beginning of next year, and then continually uh, enlarge the system. So quite a lot of nodes to monitor. But before I, before I come to that. Um, uh, essentially two uh, remarks on monitoring out of uh, my experience. One is, um, you know that from physics, and it applies also to classical physics, not only to quantum physics, when you observe something, you, dis uh, <coughs> you disturb it. Try to, try to obs observe a person in a supermarket. Uh, <laughs> And uh, on HPC, this uh, means that observing may or will cost you, in all cases, uh, cost you performance. Uh, so <coughs> try to make it in a way which uh, uses as little performance as possible or as necessary. And the other thing is I'm getting spammed by alerts since I'm at ETH. I don't like that. I don't like false alerts. Uh, um, false positives have the big danger that you don't see the positive alerts. So that's something we have, um, we definitely have to work on. So first on Ganglia, I don't have to tell you much about Ganglia since uh, the colleagues from the University of, of Bern already have introduced it. Um, Ganglia has been used for a long time on Brutus. Uh, next to Ganglia, the, we are using Simon, formerly, formerly called Hobbit, uh, as alert system. Um, but the main tool on Brutus is Ganglia serving as real-time monitoring system as performance monitoring system, much more than as a, a failure detection monitoring system. A, and I prepared, hopefully, the um, SSH tunnels has survived. Uh, I prepared here, oops, that's just a second. Yep. Well, where is the money? Where is where is the screen? Left, right, go. Uh -huh. Oh, here it is. Okay. 
So, uh, so it's not the way I want it, but um, it works like that. Uh, somehow, I have to. Oops. No, that's Euler. Now I closed it. That was very clever. Okay. Here we are again. So, uh, that's almost all uh, of Brutus in the in the minimal in the minimal uh, display. You see, there are quite a lot of nodes, and the red nodes uh, they have a problem, or a slight problem, uh, and we can see the load. So, what's the really nice thing on on uh, on ganglia is that you can see nothing. Oops. Ah, yeah. That's when you don't. Wait a second. I have to arrange the uh, the resolution correctly. Otherwise, um, I have another idea. So, screen mode should work. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. So we have here not so well visible all metrics of this machine. First, the inventory, how much memory it has, and so on. Um, and here, all the metrics, I don't go into the detail because you most probably cannot read um, from the distance uh, the, <coughs> the axis. But we have all the metrics uh, stored in an RD uh, database. So we know the history of the nodes. The resolution, of course, is going to um, uh, do uh, to, uh, it's going to be coarser and coarser the, the later you go back. But this is a very nice tool to get the history and the actual state of the nodes and even for so many nodes. We have the same for Euler. You have seen it already. You see here now we have quite some load. Um, on it, so 24 is the max load, some nodes are free. The difference here on Euler, uh, on Euler we have also virtual machines. So we also um, monitor these uh, virtual machines. What we do not monitor at the moment yet is the vCloud part, but still here. Nice tool. I tried to install it when I was at the University of Zurich on Schrodinger, which has about the size of, which has of about the size of uh, Euler 1 at the moment. Yeah, I failed, and I'll tell you why. Um, Ganglia has this um, server-client model, as it is usual. And the client is called Gmont, and the server process is called Gmetad with, uh, uh, <coughs> with configuration files and so on. In the default setting, Ganglia is set to do a kind of avalanche process. All Gmont client um, Processes are speaking with, with each other, exchanging information, and then uh, putting that, uh, having that information somewhere in the network. And you can have a detector uh, <coughs> uh, 
meta d server somewhere you will get the information because everything is sent out by multicast works perfectly up to 80 nodes or so if you have more your network is not doing something else than having uh, ganglia communication um, for the default if you just use the out-of-the-box uh, settings. Another big problem um, we or uh, Olivier and uh, others who installed uh, Ganglia DTH in the was in the beginning that the I.O. on the server disk was so high that they had to use a RAM disk to, to handle this. That's somewhat better now and it's much better now on Euler where we have virtual machines doing the Ganglia server and these virtual machines <coughs> are running on, a, on an image which comes from a NFS server, from a NetApp server, which has a SSD flash disk of about half a terabyte and which handles the small file interactions differently than a normal file system. It caches it and then it writes to the uh, NFS. So we have much better uh, server performance on the virtual server than on the physical one. So what, what can be done? Turn multicast off and do some uh, configuration. I didn't do this configuration myself. I just stole it from the server uh, or from the clients. Gmont is the client settings and pointed out what I thought is important and what uh, Olivier told me it's important. So normally uh, those clients are not mute. And that's for sure because they have to send out information. But in the default, uh, they are also listening to information and resend it. 32 kilobytes, the, uh, the, the node will send out to the server. I have increased or decreased my free memory by 32 kilobytes. And uh, you can imagine that this happens all the time. So, this threshold, uh, thresholds, has to have to be set uh, quite high so that as little information as feasible are sent out to the network. So. And similar thing for CPU uh, metrics. So you don't need the slight CPU change, metric change as it is usual on a, even on an HPC cluster uh, to be reported, but just the big ones when a job finishes or um, when a job is really under o overusing um, the machine. So that's for the practical part on Ganglia. As I said, I didn't do it myself, so uh, don't have really expertise on it. I just uh, looked at it and um, tried to understand what I did wrong a um, couple of years ago. Uh, there is also to say that um, Ganglia, that the configuration possibilities of uh, Ganglia has been extended in the last few years. Um, Olivier told me that in the beginning they had to hack um, the G Monty somewhat to get uh, to get <coughs> to get the right performance of the monitoring system. Nevertheless, never uh, regardless of the of the, the success uh, we had or we still have with um, with Ganglia, I decided to add another monitoring system on Euler. Why that? First of all, Ganglia doesn't send out alerts. It's not such a problem. I mean, of course you see when a, when a, 
uh, <coughs> when a uh, when a node fails, a single node fails, um, we have, as I said, this Hobbit and now Simon called system for bigger alerts on servers uh, like lock-in nodes, like cluster servers. But we have also a system administrator who goes through the cluster every day and looks out for red or, ye or yellow LEDs and for other irregularities. We cannot have that an Euler because the way is a bit far and we don't want to physically check a machine which is, in, uh, which is located in Lugano from Zurich. So we need a reliable alert sending uh, monitoring system. What, uh, what I said in the beginning is that uh, monitoring should eat as little as performance as possible. Modern servers, as we have in uh, Euler, have a lot of information taken out by their system, um, system processors. So if we use that information, we don't, we don't hamper the performance not at all, but almost, almost not, because, <coughs> because we are not using the, uh, the active system. We use the, <coughs> uh, the, the service system. And, uh, and uh, this information is normally sent out by SNMP, um, Stephen Armstrong, who stayed in Zurich today, just pointed out yesterday that um, the S in SNMP, which means simple, is a bit of an overuse of the word simple. Uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, the plan is to monitor the SNMP output from storage devices, from the uh, VMware layer, and, uh, and from the network devices so that we can make use of this information at one central place. Uh, the Isinga system, Isinga 2 system, should also be able to give us better information on bigger outages. For instance, on Euler, we have some of the nodes on UPS and some not. Uh, in case of a power failure, uh, we see instantly that all service processors are away as well. So if service processors and nodes uh, do not work at the same time, most probably you have a power outage. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we have no access to the power monitoring system of, uh, of GSGS. Uh, that is something uh, which would be really nice to have. And Isinga 2 uh, uh, <coughs> in, uh, allows us to bring up kind of automated um, recovery processes. Uh, for instance, for a power outage, when the power is back, to reboot the machines. We don't want just, uh, just the chassis to reboot when they get power back because um, that's not really reliable. Isinga 2, as I will present it now, is not in full production yet. It's kind of better state. Uh, there are not a lot of checks um, enabled. So what is Isinga 2? Isinga 2 is basically a re-implementation re, re of the Nagios kind of, uh, of monitoring. What's new is that it's fully multi-threaded. It's modular. It's fully modular. I will show an architecture picture. Uh, next slide. It separates monitoring from the user interface. 
So we don't have this yet uh, fully separated, but um, the user interface we are using at the moment is from Isinga 1, it's the old one, since the new one was not finished when I started with it, and uh, uh, the back, uh, <coughs> the back uh, engine is, the monitoring engine is Isinga 2. It would be even possible to have a, a Nagios kind of um, a display. And what's very important, you can, have the, you can have the user interface on a different machine than the monitoring. Um, that's, uh, from a security point of view, very important since uh, monitoring of the service processors and so on um, makes it necessary that the monitoring system has full access to the, to the backbone, to the management network, and uh, uh, this network is, on, on one hand, um, very important and very, uh, shouldn't, be, shouldn't be hacked at all because you have direct access to firmware and so on. On the other hand, a lot of vendors still make it very easy to hackers uh, inter uh, being in that system by setting um, nice passwords like username admin, uh, password admin as default, and other uh, security holes. So this network should be protected, and you don't want to have a, <coughs> a web server running there. So this is uh, another big advantage. The um, Nokia syntax can be taken over more or less one-to-one. -one. There uh, are still some bugs, but um, more or less you can migrate Nagios within without, without big changes to Isinga 2. It's much faster than Isinga 2 when you have uh, 800 or 1,000 nodes that's, that really matters. Um, and uh, with the configuration templates, um, it's much easier to configure than, uh, to, than Nagios. You just, just can say, uh, I think Nagios has introduced that recently as well. Uh, this, um, uh, this machine belongs to, to that class of machines, and then you just configure the class of machines. It's still work in prog uh, progress. Um, Isinga 2 came out this, um, uh, <coughs> this year. Uh, I think it was in May or so. Uh, I installed one of the first productive uh, version and it had uh, too many bugs to bring it to, to produ production, especially, for instance, the um, alert uh, rep uh, to the alert repetition couldn't be I configured, I don't want alert repetition. I want an alert once and not all two hours. That's uh, important for a mail system, but not for a, cl for a cluster. So just, um, I just stole that uh, the picture from, uh, from the Singa 2 website. Uh, what we have here is the Singa core. Uh, which is um, writing everything to a database. Uh, no, usually it's uh, MySQL. I used Postgres because I don't like to use Oracle products anymore. Uh, yeah, I had a sound cluster. Um, and then you have all this uh, compatibility uh, layers where you can separate all the tasks uh, to different machines, and the core is single, can be clustered as well. So for monitoring more than 1,000 uh, nodes with, uh, a lot of, um, with, a lot of, with a lot of processes monitored on them, I think this is one of the right choices. I used um, a product first, it's uh, if I uh, remember correctly, it's called OpenMon, where you have all different kinds of uh, monitoring 
uh, ready to use. And um, after I tested that, I was convinced that this thing got too. Yeah, 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 could not connect. What's wrong? Did I lose? No. I didn't lose. Okay. Yeah, of course. It's uh, no, it's not admin. It's root root. So <laughs> okay. So that's where I started it. Um, as you see, I don't um, uh, monitor a lot at the moment. Just all nodes and all. Uh, and you go to the host groups. Uh, all compute nodes. One is down. Um, for longer, and all ESX nodes, that's where uh, VMware is running on it. Uh, then we can monitor, we organize it rack-wise. That's again the same guy which is down. And more important, uh, the chassis. Uh, HPOR is the uh, chassis operating uh, whatever uh, uh, so where you can access uh, this 28 chassis uh, every chassis has two of these uh, controllers uh, to be redundant again uh, that's due to the fact that we don't have um, the machine in our basement as I said that's the single web one for for the uh, for the user interface um, for the final installation, I guess that I will use the more modern one. But still here, you have much uh, nicer interface uh, uh, than uh, than on Nagios. Uh, when I first installed Nagios, I hacked it a bit that uh, it's not so. Uh, to lose all this black uh, background, which looks so dreadful. Um, so what we check on the node currently is if just if the LSF batch system is taking jobs, which is much more important than uh, is SSH working on the compute nodes. So, yeah. And that was it from my side. Uh, just trying to give an overview of what we are currently doing on monitoring. Questions? <laughs>